Sir, should we start, sir? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. I will. I can share my screen, right? Yeah, Basla, yeah, sir? yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, with Kavita, Kavita, Baskar, unlock Kavita. Yes, sir. One second, sir. Uh, Kavita will introduce you. Okay. Shruti. Yes, sir. Put in PowerPoint mode. Yeah, sir. It's, it's loading. Kavita. Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Yes, Kavita, madam. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Kavita. Uh, audible? Yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone. Can I just Good afternoon. Change my connection. Yes. So there's some connection if you. Okay. Yeah, meanwhile, Kavita, you can introduce. Yes, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I welcome on board everyone, all the sports sci uh, scientific officer. Uh, we are gathered here for having a sports science lecture series. Coaches also, not just sports and welcome, Coach. welcome coaches also. Uh, we are here to have this sports science lecture series. Uh, topic for today is uh, long-term athlete development from Shitij Poite. He is working as a strength and conditioning at a uh, conditioning specialist at uh, Trivandrum. So I welcome Shitij. You can start your lecture. Okay. Okay. Am I audible enough? Yeah. Am I clear now? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kavita, ma'am, for the introduction. Uh, before uh, starting this session, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Saju Joseph, sir, uh, for giving all of us the opportunity to share whatever knowledge we have uh, from whatever experience we are getting. We can share that with everyone and from that we are leading to some discussions and we are getting inputs from everyone. It is a very good platform where we are growing. Uh, so that is a very good initiative by you, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, next thing, uh, why did I choose this topic? Basically in last week when uh, in one of the lecture, when Saju sir mentioned that if anyone is interested to give a uh, lecture on any of the topic, they are welcome. So uh, immediately it came to my mind that I should choose this topic uh, because uh, frankly speaking, it is very close to my heart. Uh, I immediately messaged Saju sir, sir, if by your permission, if I'm uh, allowed to take a lecture on this topic, Saju sir said that, yeah, please go ahead. And why it is closer to my heart? Basically, there are a few reasons to it. Uh, being an athlete myself, uh, starting very early since the age of five, six, uh, I have, I have specialized in one sports only. So I have always been an athlete. Uh, I have always been a sprinter and uh, never, I have never known this concept of long-term athletic development until uh, later years when I started studying about exercise science. Uh, many of the athletes are not even aware about this model. Uh, and uh, sadly, uh, many physical education teachers out there uh, are not knowing, or maybe if they know this model, they are not... Uh, 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 you know, incorporating it in their training program. So that is one of the reasons that I wanted to create awareness. Being an athlete, uh, being a early specialized sport uh, athlete, I had a fair number and ups, a fair number of ups and downs in my career. So I don't want any athlete whom I train should go through that as well. Uh, the future is in our hands. We can do much better. We can try to improve, we can correct our mistakes and benefit uh, will eventually be for the athlete. 
another uh, reason for taking this uh, topic was as i am as kavita ma'am mentioned i have, I have been posted at trivandrum uh, at a, a khelo india center so basically i am uh, working with uh, uh, athletes from age uh, 11 to 18 years of age so this topic is of very much importance to me because i have to read a lot of literature on this so that i can incorporate it in my training and how it will it will help me as well and then after taking this topic when there will be discussions i will get so much experience from you guys which will help me as well at my center so yes uh, let's start with this topic long term athletic development i'm sh- pretty sure that many of the coaches many of the exercise scientists nutritionists and everyone out here attending this lecture might be aware about this term and uh, i will just give you a brief overview on what we are going to cover today uh, basically uh we will have a basic definition or introduction of what long term athletic development is okay and uh, from that we'll slowly and steadily move to how the theory of long term athletic development has evolved over the years uh it is astonishing to know that this theory is as old as 2025 years back and it has been uh, developed since that time and still in many of the areas many of the countries it is not yet been imp- uh, you know uh practiced so that is a thing to consider uh then uh fitness components various fitness components like strength speed agility uh fundamental movement skills uh which the ypd model we will come to that has described uh, we will cover all those fitness components how we can uh, uh incorporate those into our training program what are the different uh the volume of uh, load or the intensity of that particular fitness component how we can manage that with so uh, according to their biological age uh, then lastly i will co- cover need to individualize ltad model why it is important to individualize uh, on the basis of uh, sexual characteristics males and females on the basis of early versus late maturing kids and on the basis of uh, you know the initial training stage of the athlete so uh, let's start uh first uh, firstly we'll see what is ltad model so uh, in this slide i have basically there are so many ltad m- models out there each country has their own model uh, i have uh, taken just a basic definition from athletics canada okay so uh, what does it say i will just read that uh, the long term athlete development model is a framework for an optimal training competition and recovery schedule for each stages of athletic development coaches who engage in model and its practice are more likely to produce athletes who reach their full athletic potential so basically from this definition we can see that what this definition is trying to say is if a coach follows a proper developmental model or a proper model for its particular sport for a particular athlete uh, you know depending on various environmental factors as well so that athlete has a good chance of reaching his full athletic potential but there are research out there uh, who have uh, you know tried to question this uh, uh, thing like uh, we have seen exceptions to in many sports that uh, there are athletes who start at a very late uh, age in, in their career and they're still able to achieve a, a world class or elite level uh, 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 performance so definitely there is a uh, Uh, you know questions out there but uh, if you are training if you are if you are a youth coach you should definitely try to uh, get knowledge about ltad and it will definitely help you in programming your uh, uh, schedule and your whole year as well so basically uh, athletics canada has nine uh, stages each model can have their own stages uh, starting from fundamentals then moving to sport specific skills how to build motor skills initially how to then move on to building each fitness component so that we'll see in the coming slides now uh, next is uh, this particular slide why i have uh, incorporated this slide in my ppt is that we have uh, majorly seen i in my personal experience have seen a lot that at many stadiums where i have been to kids are uh, majorly uh, given the workout which an adult is doing maybe in smaller volume or something like that uh, but if i am not wrong i have always seen that kids are running for long long miles kids are doing similar kind of sprint workout similar kind of plyometrics similar kind of strength training yeah maybe the load will be less the volume may be less but are they enjoying it okay so 
the main component of uh, kids fitness should be fun okay uh, any uh, all coaches and all the people who are engaged in youth fitness should always remember remember that uh, the the main uh, focus should be fun because eventually the kids are coming to the ground to enjoy right they don't want to go into some competition and give their personal best they don't want to compete every now and then definitely competition is going to push them but it should be managed accordingly it should be managed in a way that they are, it is not hampering their uh, mental aspect as well as the physical aspect okay so this is a very uh, uh, good uh, line which has been mentioned in the nsca's youth position statement uh, written by avri f okay so uh, what they have said that researchers have previously uh, uh, previously done i am not able to see that uh, sorry researchers are not uh, researchers have previously uh, done some register what what is the issue over here can i remove this uh, kavita how to remove this uh, upper uh, portion when i'm sharing my screen hide the video pen oh, sorry yeah yeah okay cool cool okay that's good sorry guys so uh, this uh, this uh, sentence or this particular uh, thing which is said researchers have previously documented the importance of not treating children like miniature adults they are not mini adults they have completely different physiological uh, thing going on in their body they have completely different maturation level okay so owing to the clear differences in physical growth and stature coaches should be aware that what kind of training should be given to them so that is one of the uh, uh, this is one of the important statement that you should always remember when you are coaching youth uh, few more points which has been covered in the nsca position statement for uh, resistance training uh, majorly being an snc involved in a gym involved in a fa facility where strength training is done uh, we have often seen that even pedi few pediatricians out there are still suggesting that strength training is bad for uh, kids uh, it is not good you, it will hamper their growth and eventually even coaches have a fear uh, that if we give uh, some sort of strength training uh, then it is going to hamper or it's it's going to lead some lead to some injuries but in this particular research or in this particular statement the nsca uh, which is the national strength and conditioning association has clearly mentioned that uh, the risks which are uh, uh, you know risk which are happening due to the resistance training are very low okay it is like so many studies have been done and only 1 to 2% of injuries are happening due to weight training or maybe some kind of resistance training and that 1 to 2% is also happening due to a few reasons that is uh, 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 the not the professionals who are not qualified for that particular training are taking that training for youths okay they are not teaching proper techniques they are they are, they are loading them uh, you know the volume of load is pretty high they are not having a progressive uh, plan the technical competency is not there and they are just giving them uh, exercise not based on their uh, physical stature but just by looking at maybe adults if they are lifting the kids can do it as well so uh, that is the only 1 to 2% of injury rate is over there like many research have combined that and showed that uh, another thing is there are potential advantages to resistance training uh, which we'll cover maybe in the coming slides or if i have not covered i will definitely tell you guys uh, so uh, there is first of all i would like to create this session is for creating awareness amongst coaches that it is is not harmful for kids to do any kind of strength training if it is progressively planned properly okay uh, these two pictures which i have uh, shown in this ppt shows that on the on one side the kids are enjoying they are laughing and playing football on on the other side this kid is so tired he is not even looking at the ball okay so just for an example i have given this uh, image so always look up to this that the kids are not getting so much tired that next day they don't want to come to that training okay so always have that fun part initially uh, till the age of maybe 8 9 years of age you have to keep the fun part as your priority and try to uh, incorporate different type of uh, movements in your uh, uh, practice okay yeah okay 
so uh, now we'll see uh, how the evolution of ltad theory has happened or take to take one place okay so there are three there are there have been many researchers guys okay uh, approaches there have been many researchers done in past uh, 20 25 years but these three are uh, the uh, uh, we can say the main base for uh, ltad model and over the period we will see how this uh, uh, model of dmsp has developed into ltad model by bailey and hamilton and how lloyd and oliver has taken that base and provided us with a bulletproof model for ltad the youth physical development model is one of a kind and i feel it will help you guys to easily program of uh, 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 all the fitness components in uh, in a proper way so uh, first of all we'll see developmental model of sports participation of quote so you can see this the dmsp model uh, given by kote has been done in 1999 so even though this model is particularly not related to ltad but it has given us a base for that so what it has given we'll see uh, so although titled a participation model originally developed by the the dmsp following 15 individual interviews with four elite sporting families so this uh, particular research which is done by kote was done by interview interviewing uh, four elite sporting families okay uh, from that uh, three fathers four mothers four sisters and four athletes were interviewed okay total number of 15 individuals okay and this model is basically a good research for uh, if you want to show this research to parents it can definitely show them how the family influences one uh, an individual's athletics athletic career right so how family support can definitely have a bigger impact how a coach can has a have a bigger impact on a particular individual's career so this model is very good for that uh, what so the dmsp describes uh, participation and performance pathways based on chronologically so there are definitely pros and cons in few uh, models uh, which the third model has tried to clear all those cons uh, in this model one of the major pro cons was one of the major disadvantage was chronological age so uh, whatever the fitness components uh, uh, kote has mentioned we should do it in certain age has been on the basis of chronological age we all know that uh, everyone has a different chronological age and a biological age uh, at that particular period and definitely in, into adulthood as well if we are training well if the athlete is a uh, good adaptation is there yes training for a long time his biological age definitely will be less we can see a good example through cristiano ronaldo right his age is around 30 35 i think 35 maybe but his uh, biological age is so less because he's so fit okay so uh, that is the major difference between chronological and biological age uh, this means proposed ages and the respective ranges do not account for individual differences in the timing and tempo of maturation that is what i just explained it does not take into account the maturation level of that particular athlete it is just giving uh, the exercise based on what his age is maybe if he's 10 years old given this fitness component if he's 15 years old given so and so forth okay uh, he is not taking into account training age as well so training age is basically the uh, amount of training you have done uh, formalized training you have done in a particular fitness component right if i for giving just a, giving an example if an athlete is coming to me he's 18 years of age he, he has played at national levels okay but if he has never been into a gym if he has never been into resistance training the training age for that athlete for me is going to be zero okay he is going to basically start from the fundamentals again okay we have to build it from there i cannot directly give him weights and i cannot directly load him so i have to progress slowly and steadily uh, third point is movement competency uh, this point is also not take covered by kote movement competency is basically how well that individual is doing that particular movement for example if an athlete is doing a squat or a lunge uh, he might be matured enough okay he might be having all the maturation uh, physiological things going on in his body he has adapted to that but if he's not taught how to do that squat or lunge properly so i will never move him to the next stage or i will never move him to external loading okay we have to always focus on competency of, of that particular movement 
when i am happy when he is ticking all the boxes for those particular movements then only we can load them and then the injury chances will be very less okay but nonetheless what has this model given to us the dmsp emphasizes the importance of sampling before specializing okay a consistent theme throughout subsequent models describing physical development of you so uh, the main uh, pro or the main point or the main concept given by this model is sampling before specializing so this concept has been followed throughout the years in different researches in different models and uh, one of the this is this is important because we always want to build the base as early as possible till the age of 15 maybe till the age of 14 and then start doing more of sport specific skills and uh, focus on one sport till that you can definitely uh, make the athlete uh, uh, play multiple sport or after the age of 10 or 12 he can start focusing on one or two events so that is what is happening uh, in us right now so i have been closely following uh, high school level uh, track and field athletes and so uh, university athletes and the amount the, the performance they are giving is world class like at university level these athletes are running 10.1 10.0 and 9.9 seconds in 100 meters how is that possible uh, i feel it is only possible by having a proper model set for that particular uh, country or that particular area or that particular event uh, because what i have seen over the years indian athletes are definitely very good till the age of 15 16 they are they are almost performing similarly somewhere there are exceptional talents no doubt but the drastic change in performance is happening after that in 17 18 years of age i have seen that personally if anyone has different opinions please come forward and discuss it later on uh, okay this is about dmsp model we will see a diagram of that so this is basically the uh, diagram of uh, dmsp model uh, you can see as the chronological age increases the uh, as the age is 6 to 13 years he is first doing sampling in sampling he is basically going to focus on fundamentals and basic motor skills and once he reaches into the age of 13 and 15 he is going to specialize okay specialization years are focusing on one or two events maybe and uh, then moving to the investment years where he is going to focus uh, on elite performance okay and if uh, that athlete or the or that individual is not going to focus on sports but more on academics that athlete has a good physical literacy over here in the sampling years and then can move to recreational years which is just maintaining his health okay it can help him maintain his health so that is about uh, the the model by cotte next model is uh, by bailey and hamilton this model is uh, came up in 2004 they have a so all these references i have given you can definitely go and check out the researches the reference paper of them they have the, uh, given in depth what i have tried here is to take out important points from that and keep it as short as possible uh so the uh, this model of bailey and hamilton is like following an examination of coaching knowledge and practice maccon and ball concluded that it was the most popular model followed by the coaches okay this ltad model was the most popular model till the uh, ypd model came out uh, like till 2013 this model was very much popular in all the coaching practices of youth training okay uh the major pros and cons we can we will see now one of the pros is that uh stamina and strength the fitness components of stamina which is endurance and strength are based on maturational level okay so the these two fitness components by uh the uh, given by bailey and hamilton are based on the maturational level which is on the biological age and uh, the con can be the uh, flexibility suppleness speed and skill is based on chronological age so uh, there is little bit of uh, uh, inconsistency uh, we, which we can find over here in this model but uh, no, nonetheless it has given us a very good base to uh, you know start a training program uh, before moving more into bailey and hamilton i wanted to get into peak height velocity Uh, why i wanted to get it over here because a few coaches might not be aware or maybe they need more uh, information on it so basically 
Uh, peak height velocity is simply the period of time in which a child experiences their fastest upward growth in their stature. That is the time when they grow the fastest during their adolescent growth spurt. So we all know uh, at the age of maybe uh, I've, I've read a research and uh, I tried to get a research where Indian population is ha has a growth spurt and uh, I found that it was 11.9 years for girls and somewhat 12.9 to 13 years for boys. So uh, that is the period where uh, the individual is ha individual will have is growth spurt and it will have a period of up fastest upward growth. But uh, nonetheless, the, the majority of the growth is done in the initial years when you're baby. Okay. So it is not, this is not the age where maximum growth is happening. Maximum growth happens when you're two, three years of age, where there's around 25 centimeters of incre increment in your height. Okay. But uh, after this is a period which we have to focus in respect to the fitness components, basically. Okay. So there are several uh, ways to measure a child's maturity offset. Uh, however, that is your peak height velocity or when the onset of adolescent sport is happening, there are different methods. However, they require either genital assessment or radiography. So these two techniques, are, we cannot say their genital assessment might not be ethical and uh, radiography can be a little bit of expensive. Everyone must not be ha having that at their own centers. Coaches must not be having the facility to use it. So uh, consequently, a simple and non-invasive method of predicting uh, peak height velocity uh, uh, is completed by recording the following information, just your gender, date of birth, date of measurement, sitting height, standing height and weight. And uh, now we get ready-made uh, Excel sheets to uh, know the peak height velocity. So I have uh, inserted a image of uh, she that sheet, particular sheet. This sheet is made by Science for Sport. Uh, you can, uh, I even I have the sheet. If anyone needs it, they can definitely take it from me. So what you have to do over here is basically just put the uh, the information in this blue boxes. And once you can put this information in this blue boxes, you will get to know the maturity offset. For example, the age of this boy is 10.2 years. Okay, but after calculations, the, we get to know at what age he is going to have his peak height velocity. That is 12.7 years. So the maturity offset is minus 2.5 years. So we, we know that there is still, still 2.5 years left for him to attain his peak height velocity. So we know that he is in a pre-puberty stage. Okay. So from this, we can uh, maybe uh, have a group of kids and train them according to the, according to their maturational status. Uh, for example, uh, at my center, I will try to uh, make groups of kids who are in pre-puberty, who are in circumpuberty, and who are in post-puberty. So that will help me to uh, keep a track of their record easily because I will have to give exercise uh, uh, specific to that particular group. So that is how uh, that is the basic. In information on peak height velocity growth spurt. I think if we have anthropometrists today in our sessions, they can uh, give a little bit more insight on this. Uh, coming to next point, uh, what else Bailey and Hamilton have suggested in their model? Okay, so uh, few coaches might be uh, uh, having such questions like there are a few sports which need early specialization. They will come to me and ask what to do in that. What to do? You, you are saying I you cannot uh, uh, give sport specific exercises till they reach 10 years of age, then what to do? So uh, there is, uh, uh, obviously there are a few early specializations, specialization sport. One of them being gymnastics. I hope Ashok sir is there today uh, uh, attending our lecture. Uh, I will definitely love to answer one of his question, which he asked in anthropometry lecture. So later on, sir, we'll discuss on that. Uh, so what Bailey and Hamilton has suggested that if you are if you are uh, uh, engaging in an early specialization sport or you, if you are a coach which requires early specialization, you need to have your own model first of all. You you cannot follow a base model which is uh, being followed by the uh, late specialization ex, uh, sport because uh, we they require to attain their peak performance early, right? Maybe uh, in 15, 16 years of age in gymnastics we have seen that. So uh, what they can do is they can have their own model. Uh, we can sit with coaches. What, what are the recommendations according to that we can build? 
but yes they have to build their fundamental movement skills and gross motor skills you can combine that two stages which are uh, omitted over here we can see in early specialization model fundamental stage and learning to train has been omitted so what you can do is for give little bit of time maybe a few months of time to uh, uh, you know build up that fundamental motor skills and uh, basic gross motor skills and then move to the training to train stage and so on and so forth so that is how you can uh, differentiate between early specialization and late specialization code coming to next point uh, one of the uh, most uh, what what i can say is uh, contradictory uh, statement or a concept given by uh, bailey and hamilton is windows of opportunity okay first we'll see what is windows of opportunity windows of opportunity are based on periods where fitness Uh, is naturally developing during growth and maturation and the theory supposes that those periods represent a time when youth will be most responsive to training they further suggested that a failure to exploit a window of opportunity with adequate training would forever lower the future adult potential okay so from this uh, definition of windows of opportunity what he bailey and hamilton were trying to say that at a particular period in a in a growth of an athlete Uh, for example in pre puberty if we are giving more of neural uh, uh, type of exercise sprinting and plyometrics it will help them a lot and uh, after post puberty when they have good amount of androgen con concentration uh, like testosterone growth hormone in their body uh, they will uh, have more strength uh, capacity and we have to give strength training in that particular period itself like they are suggesting you cannot give strength training or speed training or other fitness components early than that so uh, there is definitely contraindication to this i will cover this uh, i will give answer to this in the coming slides so this is basic uh, diagram a composite diagram of uh, bailey and hamilton so from this diagram we can again see a base which has been taken from cot the fundamentals are the base which are which are being taught in the early age but over here only stamina only endurance and strength are being given on the basis of maturation all other fitness components are only based on the chronological age and through this model we can see that strength is nowhere given over here in the age of maybe uh, 9 to 12 years of age nowhere strength training is given or maybe sports specific fixes are only given over here so there is little bit of confusion in this and we will clear that in the third model which is the best model i feel so far uh, let's move forward okay so this is the model everyone can follow who are trying to teach uh, youth athletes uh, this model is called youth physical development model proposed by lloyd and oliver okay so first of all why this model is not called ltad or why this model is not called long term athletic development so uh, what lloyd and oliver oliver gave gave a, a reasoning on this that the reasoning behind calling it youth physical development model is that when we read long term athletic development some sometimes it the parents or the coaches or few people misunderstand that this model is only for athletes or only for kids who are engaged in sports and other kids cannot follow this model or other kids cannot follow this training pattern okay so that's why lloyd and oliver renamed it as youth physical development model whereby the overall youth can have a same program or proper model and they can follow it there is no confusion in that uh, next point is 10000 hour rule by erickson okay first of all this uh, concept of 10000 hour of practice by given up to us by erickson uh, this uh, concept is given by bailey and hamilton in their uh, in their uh, subsequent model okay but uh, what is happened uh, there have been uh, research is done on particular athletes elite performance and what they have seen they uh, this uh, research is majorly done by baker and young uh, one what they have seen is that Uh, athletes have just done 4000 to 6000 hours of quality training and they have achieved elite performance okay so later on erickson in his own editorial uh, can you know try to clear that this is a bit of a misunderstanding and a misnomer what bailey and hamilton took and it is always important to give importance to quality over quantity and they also came forward to that 
if we are doing 10000 hours of training if we are just focusing on getting this type of volume done it is going to lead to overuse okay overused injuries okay so we don't want quantity to be given in a lot of number okay we want to focus on quality one of the major pros which i can mention about ypd model is they had they have given us nine physical qualities so in previous two models we see we have seen that in the quarter model he didn't mention about any physical component but in the uh, 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 ltad model by bailey and hamilton they have shown us that strength should be done here speed should be done here but they have never shown where to do agility where to do power where to do flexibility okay they have not given that uh, proper uh, data right so that uh, has been covered by the ypd model we will cover the fitness components okay and as i mentioned i will try to answer the windows of opportunity question so what ypd or what lloyd and oliver have uh, given that it is not always true that if you if the particular athlete has lost that potential period to develop his uh, uh, fundamentals or develop his gross motor skills in an early age that he will never achieve his athletic potential as i mentioned earlier there are so many exceptions out there so many world class athletes they might have not started very young okay but they have achieved peak elite performance right so it is uh, it is it is you don't want to take it so much seriously but yeah you have to focus or you we want to train the kids as early as possible so they can train do advanced training when they reach uh, 15 16 years of age we don't want to waste time because like for example if an athlete comes to an ncoe center uh, and there there if kavita mam is there and she looks up to him and that guy is not able to do a push up he's 18 years of age kavita mam is going to get fed up are i have to teach him push up first now i have to start from squat i have to teach him all the... so all the year, all whole year is going to get wasted in that only they are not able to focus on other part so as a youth coach you can give, do this and help the other coaches who will be later on uh, you know uh, coaching the uh, adult kids okay so that is what we can do this is a very good this is the main uh, ypd model okay so this is for males and for females also it is very much same the only difference in females and males is that the fitness components in females shift little bit to the left side because we all know that females uh, uh, mature little earlier their peak height velocity they they, they the adolescent spurt the onset of that uh, adolescent spurt is little bit earlier so you have to just move it little bit to the left side nothing else so from this we can see how fundamental movement skills sport specific skills and other fitness components have been mentioned by uh, lloyd and oliver in this diagram and so simple diagram and from this one single diagram you can plan a proper training program i feel easily for a youth athlete or a adolescent or childhood athlete okay so the the uh, font size basically refers to the importance so font size uh, smaller font size means sport specific skills will not be given so much of importance in the early stages but we can see fms agility strength are given focus in all the stages of that uh, particular athlete's career okay so uh, also looking at this training structure you have to keep it unstructured in the earlier ages we don't want to give them a uh, uh, tell that seven year old kid go there and do seven reps of three uh, three three sets go lift this much load go go do and complete that much repetitions only we don't want to do that okay we want to keep it as free as possible and as i mentioned earlier as much fun as possible okay so maybe animal movements maybe few games incorporating that into your program and through that games you can try to cover all the fitness components or all the movements which which you wish to develop okay so uh, uh, now we will cover the fitness components which have been mentioned by uh, lloyd and oliver okay so one by one i will try to clear that uh, as as fast as possible so uh, fundamental movement skills okay so fundamental these fundamental movement skills are basically the base for everyone right from being a baby to being an old age person okay so we want these fundamental movement skills to be there in everyone we want to build that competency so that the gross motor skills can be later on 
developed gross motor skills are basically the combination of all these skills right like some if you see doing uh, any sport they are running and jumping they might be running and throwing they might be running and catching they might be jumping and sliding something like that combination of this fundamental fundamental so uh, what bailey and hamilton has suggested that in the initial years till the age of 7 8 you want to have a good uh, uh, base of this fms even ypd suggests same uh, this reference number 75 in particular which i have mentioned over here it is a research done by zaka polu if i'm not if i'm not uh, pronouncing her wrongly it is a research done by zaka polu and in that research what they have done this research was particularly done for childhood uh, uh, kids okay and in that research they made three groups okay and the three groups were initially done uh, given an uh, assessment program in which they completed seven locomotor skills which were running skipping bounding leaping jumping galloping and sliding okay if i'm not wrong in that and after a particular pe- period of uh, training they measured it again so what was the difference between these three groups was that group a and b was following a organized planned program okay it was not structured i am not saying it was structured it was a organized planned program whereas the group c they were just the kids were coming in group from groups and they were just doing free play activities like the pe teacher will call them and the it will tell them to do any kind of activities they wish to do okay and uh, group b had a difference that the music component was added in their uh, uh program okay music plus all the organized planned program so what they found out was group a and b did pretty well in the assessment post uh, post uh, training or post that period when the assessment was done group a and b particularly did very well than in compared to group c so over here we want to uh, what i want to mention is even if you are training kids even if you are training childhood kids okay so till the age of 7 8 of years you need to have a proper plan ready okay you don't just want to go at that ground and tell them to ja, go play langdi go play sonsakli or go play dog, dog and the ball okay we don't want to do that okay we want some organized plan so that we know what we are trying to achieve in later years we wa- know that we want gross motor skills to be developed right so that is what what i wanted to mention in fundamental movement skills and one important thing that she has mentioned in her research again and again is that the fun aspect okay if there is no fun aspect involved or fit in that program then there is loss of uh, interest shown by that particular kid to come again and train with you or come again and do that particular activity and maybe uh, for whole life maybe she might never get engaged in any sports okay so we all want that uh, uh, at least to be there have fun and come again and build up slowly on that okay next it's sport specific skills i have not mentioned anything in that because the reason behind it is every sport will have different specific skills right uh, boxing will have different hockey will have different uh, running uh, athletics will have different on the only thing what you have to keep in mind as a coach whenever you're training a youth kid is that sport specific skills will be built later on in their career okay so from this model we can see less importance is given to sport specific skills okay after the age of 9 10 11 they are starting to get into those skills maybe they are trying to focus on one or two events okay or one or two sports and then that particular coach if he is training in that formula training maybe he is going to play hockey the hockey coach will give him particular sport skills right so he, that that can be developed after that bailey and hamilton have clearly mentioned if you are engaging in a late specialization sport you should never start a uh, sport specific skill training uh, as early as 10 years of age so t- till 10 years of age you don't want to engage in sport specific training okay now my uh, favorite uh, component strength okay why it is my favorite component because it is criticized a lot by a lot of people that strength training should not be given to young child ch- child like 7 8 years of age 9 maybe till the age of 12 13 also people are saying that ki strength training diya to wo uska height badhega hi nahi so uh, people need to understand what is the science behind it 
and what i can now clear that in this session is that strength training is safe for children and there are so i have given references of that research papers also over here they have clearly shown that so many studies have been done and strength training has not hampered or have any kind of you know a major injury concerns to that particular individual or particular child okay only when the uh, program is not uh, supervised by a qualified professional if the load is not monitored properly is not progressed properly then there is 99% of chance that there are going to be some sort of injuries okay and it will be it is very obvious it is common sense so uh, what the ltad model suggested okay as we see as we have seen the ltad model of bailey and hamilton suggested that strength training should be started 12 to 18 months post puberty okay so the reason behind them telling that post puberty is because uh, the uh, androgen co concentration which is released okay post puberty when there is peak weight velocity happening the hormones that are released will help the athlete of that particular individual to have more adaptation okay but what uh, what we all know that's strength training is not only uh, the strength training adaptations are not going to happen only due to the uh, androgen hormones right it is it is a combi combination of muscular adaptation neural adaptation and me other mechanical factors as well okay so when is neural plasticity happening the most okay neural plasticity is most sensitive in the pre puberty years okay in the age of maybe 9 to 12 so what the ypd model suggested or what lloyd and oliver suggested is ypd suggested develop muscular strength should be a priority at all stages okay so from this chart we can definitely see that how much importance they have given to strength training in all the stages okay but then the uh, what kind of strength training okay then the, we have the coaches or the people who are engaged in coaching youth should be aware that directly usko 20 kg ka bar nahi dena squat karne ke liye or maybe you don't want to give him 10 kg of dumbbell and go do maybe clean pull whatever you don't want to give him a heavy weight we have to teach them slowly and steadily uh, what we can do is do body weight exercises basically calis body weight calisthenics okay pushing pulling then some exercises have also been proven to uh, improve the core and lower back musculature uh, there are very many different varieties of doing swiss ball exercise you can also do uh, hamstring curls on that and many many other exercises and one of the best uh, equipment which you can use with kids is medicine ball okay i am not talking about heavy medicine balls but lighter medicine balls and slowly you can progress with that uh, so these can be done in the early stages and slowly expose them to external loading okay slowly and steadily you can expose them to external loading yeah and always follow a competency based approach so uh, what i have learned in my uh, training till now is that rather than following a protocol based approach uh, where it is like given in a certain research that okay the 10 mahine mein yahi karna hai it is for in the first 10 months this in next 12 months this okay but it is always not true or cannot be uh, applied to each individual each individual will learn it in a different way so following a competency based approach can keep it as individualistic as possible okay also strength training is very critical for fms development so okay if you are running if you are walking if you are jumping and at that time the athlete is also doing little bit of body weight exercises it is going to definitely help him that in that development also injury prevention and performance enhancement will be there these are the basic athletic uh, sorry for the blur picture guys uh, i tried my best uh, this is these are the basic uh, competencies athletic motor skill competencies which you can try to cover uh, you can see lower body bilateral movements concentric eccentric e unilateral movements upper body pushing and pulling then agility wise acceleration deceleration reacceleration you know uh, uh, i will come to that agility component as well so that time i will try to clear that then throwing catching grasping so from these only it is so easy to make a program for a particular kid right you don't want to think you hard it everything is given by us to the uh, uh, coaches like we have this models ready and from this according to you according to your own experience you have to just pick up the components and uh, just uh, utilize it that in your program 
okay this is a uh, this is a blur picture again uh, i tried my best this is a, a this this diagram covers majority of the points which has been given in the position statement by nsca okay and again this is uh, done by avri f uh, and this is a composite diagram uh, done by ylm sports science which is on instagram okay guys can check it out a good channel to follow uh, what they have basically mentioned over here important points perform one to three sets of 6 to 15 repetitions on a variety of upper body and lower body strength exercise okay then begin with relatively light loads and always focus on correct exercise technique okay so i think all the points are equally important but i wanted to specifically mention due to the strength aspect which we are talking about right now they have even mentioned about how much load we should give to uh, power exercises which is one to three sets of three to six repetition of variety of upper body and lower body power movements so that's about this diagram you can definitely go and check this diagram uh coming to the next fitness component which is hypertrophy uh, uh as we all know uh, due to the androgen hormone release in our body there will be peak weight velocity which will happen a uh, few months after the peak height velocity okay so what the ypd model suggest is uh, emphasis on hypertrophy training should be around the ages of 14 years in male and 12 years in female athletes okay and in terms of resistance training uh, focus should be geared towards strength development before adolescence as we uh, as we have uh, covered it earlier for strength development should be given the focus due to the neural adaptations that will take place when we do strength training uh, there will be more uh, higher number of motor recruitments will be there increased firing rates okay the neural plasticity uh, sensitivity is there so Uh, we can help to build that myelin sheath in a very good way okay so that uh, neural pathway is strong enough and better than uh, other uh, uh, you know people who are not engaged in strength training uh, pre puberty in, before adolescence and after the adolescent spurt strength training should be interspersed with bouts of hypertrophy training try uh, aiming to make further gains in muscular strength and overall performance so it's uh, i think it's very basic before adolescence before pre in pre in pre puberty you want to focus more on strength body weight exercises medicine balls wrist ball exercises okay more on speed as well uh, and uh, low intensity plyometrics and then later on when you have uh, reached your adolescence spurt you have crossed your adolescence spurt you can start doing a little bit of hypertrophy training as well Uh, we have good essences out here so they can definitely give input on how we can incorporate hypertrophy training uh, in kids in these years uh, then coming to the power aspect okay so now uh, one of the major cons of bailey and hamilton's model was the ltad model they have completely omitted few components and one of the component is power as we all know power is the most important fitness component required in majority of the sports okay and uh, it is uh, it that they have not given a particular window in which we can train power but ypd has tried to uh, you know cover this topic so the ability to generate high levels of power is essential for sporting success however the power is omitted from current ltad model oh, sorry the ypd model shows that the key period of power development start at the onset of adolescence so i will just go back a little bit so you can see here at the onset of uh, adolescence the power development or the power aspect can be incorporated largely because of the rapid improvements uh, in muscle power happening due to uh, during the adolescence being attributed to the maturational influence again the hormonal uh, differences which are going to come there post puberty okay but as is in the case with muscular strength similar to muscular strength we all know little bit of neural uh, component will be also involved in power exercises right if i'm not wrong so the research would therefore suggest that muscular power that is strain is trainable throughout childhood although the magnitude and rate of development may differ okay we don't want to focus on contrast training maybe give them bar and jump squats and then we uh, body weight jumping we don't want to do all that 
all that advanced stuff will be done later on by the adult athletes or once they have reached that level but basic power build up can be done with medicine ball throws uh, plyometrics sprint training okay uh, one of the most important uh, thing i want to tell everyone is that sprint is a fitness component in which there is so much of muscle recruitment that majority of the exercise cannot come uh, you know have that much muscle recruitment in that particular exercise only sprint doing a sprint can have so much of uh, motor, uh, neural, neural recruitment so uh, sprint training is one of the best training you can do with your childhood athletes okay coming to speed with that uh, what the L- ad model advocates that windows of opportunity for speed development and entirely age related okay so uh, in the bailey and hamilton model we see that the speed component is chronological uh, dependent okay this it is age related but uh, what ypd has come up from the review of rup 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 ramp f i am not able to pronounce him pre pubescent benefited most from training requiring high levels of neural activation which is plyometrics and sprint training whereas adolescents responded more favorably to training modes that targeted both neural and structural development so from this we can see that high levels of neural recruitment can be done from plyometrics and sprint training so speed can definitely be incorporated into a uh, uh, a child's training program again it will not be similar to a uh, elite performers training program but different the volume and intensity will be managed by the particular coach from a practical perspective this would suggest that pre pubescent children should focus their speed development around plyometrics technical competency and sprint work to develop the existing physical qualities the de- existing physical quality is right like we are again and again i'm saying sensitive to neural adaptations okay pre puberty is sensitive to neural adaptation most sensitive so giving this highly neural activities can help develop that athlete a little bit more okay whereas adolescents should focus more on strength training plyometrics sprint training to maximize overall speed gains okay so this strength training you can definitely do in pre puberty but that will be uh, majorly focused on body weight exercises and medicine ball and ball exercise okay uh, one of the most important fitness component again which was omitted by the ltd model was agility uh, uh, as uh, ypd has uh, the lloyd and oliver what they see what they have seen manode engilum undakki adhi marnje prabha undapp undakana naan undakana ha fitness components for particularly for adults it has been researched a lot okay for football players for hockey players for activities uh, sporting activities which require acceleration deceleration re acceleration but majorly there is lot of under research or no research that is found majorly on uh, agility component in respect to the kids maybe from age of 9 to maybe 14 15 uh, if i'm not wrong and and even ltad model has omitted this uh, fitness component so uh, due to the lack of research available for agility what ypd model has uh, done they have basically divided this uh, uh, component into two sub components of agility itself which is the uh, change of direction ability and the perceptual cognitive ability so they have then seen that what is a change of direction change of direction basically is inclusive of technique straight running speed or maybe lateral linear maybe shuffles and lower limb strength and anthropometry so we know that lower limb strength can be developed through few exercises in pre puberty as well okay and in adulthood as well straight running speed we saw that speed can be developed in pre puberty technique so the uh, and as early as possible if that particular individual is being trained for certain movements he is going to develop that over the years due to his experience as well right so uh, they have suggested that as lower limb strength and straight running speed are components of agility it is logical to develop agility and reinforce coordination and movement pattern accuracy in early years as well okay so in early years we can definitely do agility 
one important concept was uh, or one important point what bailey and hamilton have suggested in their model that this agility component or these linear runs lateral runs shuffles should not be more than 5 seconds for uh, kids from till the age of 9 8 7 or 8 years of age which can you know lead to some 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 sort of injuries as you know they are not that capable enough to stop properly they are not capable enough to twist and turn so once they have built that competency competency in agility you can definitely go for more complex agility exercises or agility uh, uh, drills pre pubescence has also been in, uh, identified as a period that sees children undergo rapid developments in neuromuscular system with rates of brain maturation peaking between 6 8 10 and 12 years so we can see here as there is brain maturation peaking at this particular age if we are giving them certain exercise or certain kind of training modality it is going to get encrypted as early as possible and they are going to mature with it they are with their experience they are going to eventually learn it by themselves as well okay so as i said we are going to make it easier for the coaches who are dealing with higher level athletes okay so again when that athlete goes to a bigger uh, center okay at a elite center and if he doesn't know how to cut properly how to run while uh, doing lateral runs okay so the if the technical component is not there then again that uh, coach will give me a bad words like isne kuch sikhaya nahi pehle sab mere upar hi chhod diya isne so uh, as a youth coach you want to clear all these base uh, properly and uh, ypd has also seen that we all know cognitive function is basically a combination of visual scanning knowledge of situation what is happening around what the athlete sees here and there pattern recognition and antiseptic qualities influence agility performance so given the lack of existing developmental literature it is suggested that training focus of agility should be made more challenging as the individual progresses through childhood and into adulthood with use of more open and unplanned training methods to continually overload the training stimulus okay uh, i think that is uh, that is it for uh, agility one important point a uh, ypd model has mentioned in the agility section is the point of adolescent awkwardness so we in our uh, in our coaching career we have always seen that uh, somewhere at the age of 12 to 14 years of age kids are not able to balance properly or maybe they are not able to do the same movements they have been doing earlier but now they are not able to perform those movement in a better way or in the same way itself so why that happens the as a strength and conditioning coach or as a skill coach uh, the uh, we should be aware that uh, the rapid gains in limb length during the adolescent growth spurt can lead to decreases in motor control performance a concept commonly referred to as adolescent awkwardness so during this stage of development what researchers have suggested that you have to again incorporate the basic movement slowly okay so similar to like when there is an acl injury okay so when there is acl injury in the rehab uh, the physiotherapist or the snc will try to incorporate basic movement skills and try to perfect reperfect that again and again because they have lost that balance per component in their uh, uh, body and so many other factors can be there maybe he has a fear of doing that particular movement due to that injury so they have to reperfect that movement similar with adolescent awkwardness uh, as well so you should keep in mind whenever there is decrement in motor control per performance of a particular individual in that age don't blame the athlete or don't blame adi you tu to pehle kar raha tha abhi kya hua alsi ho gaya it is not like that it is not their fault maybe okay we have to look we have to study behind it ki why it is happening is there any fault in my program Is, is i am i not have i not teaching him something properly okay so always question uh, yourself and ask and there are always people around there to support you and answer your questions uh, next component is mobility uh, first of all what ypd suggested is that mobility or flexibility is not a fitness component that should be given importance at any stage it is a fitness component that should be done throughout your career okay it is not like ye stage mein or at this particular stage you have to do mobility at this particular stage you have to focus more on flexibility is nothing like that 
but uh, it it is like should be an, a part of any athletic program to ensure athletes are capable of reaching the requisite ranges of motion required for their sport so as an snc or as a coach you should always focus that the particular individual is capable enough to move in that range of motion required for that sport okay maybe uh, the flexibility required for a gymnast might not be required for a runner or might be not, not required for particular sport okay so uh, sometimes i have seen in my when i was doing training when i was an athlete a uh, lot of coaches would try to push me from behind chalo go out stretch out most of but if that athlete is not that flexible well if that there is anatomical problem in some kind of anatomical issues in that athlete how is going to reach to that range of motion everyone has different structure so uh, please uh, uh, accordingly uh, you have to think about it uh, and uh, incorporate in your program the ypd model proposes that middle childhood age of 5 to 11 years of age serves as the most important time frame for an individual to incorporate flexibility and mobility training the rational for the selection is that it incorporates a period that has a previous that has previously been termed a critical period of development for flexibility okay this suppleness uh, period has been given to us by dmsp in his uh, in by cote in his 1999 model okay and why it is that pre pubescence serve as an opportunity to develop mobility whereas maintenance is acquired maintenance of the acquired level should be focus of adolescents and uh, adults so uh, researchers have seen that uh, exception to the uh, uh, athletes okay who are always doing flexibility or some kind of flexibility routine post or pre their workout what they have seen in that study is that uh, uh, once they have crossed their adolescent spurt or once they have are they are into their uh, adulthood the ability of flexibility is declining slowly and steadily okay but how it can be maintained is by doing a proper program for it okay you can just keep on doing flexibility so like flexibility routine some kind of recovery methods or uh, if there is any anatomical uh, problem you can definitely go out to the physio and check it out why he is not able to lean forward that much or why he is not able to extend his back that much so on and so forth okay uh, one of the fitness component which i hate the most <laughs> because being a sprinter i never want to run long miles Uh, uh so and why i hate it also is like uh, since my my childhood and since the time i have been training okay what i have seen always on the at the ground which i used to train i always used to see small kids maybe 7 8 years of age running 10 10 15 15 rounds on that 400 meter track and i i didn't i obviously i didn't have the knowledge to know what is the reason behind it at that time but today i imagine and i feel so bad that those people those kids were running 10 10 15 15 rounds which is not going to help them at all at that age at that age it is they, it is basically going to turn those maybe some sort of white twitch fibers the fast twitch fibers are getting slow twitch fibers obviously type 2 fibers cannot be converted into type 1 but they are making those type 2 fibers slow right but eventually what we see in all the sports majority of the sports exception of endurance sports majority of the sports require speed so which type of fibers we require we require the type 2 fibers right and uh, that is what i have i have mentioned this paragraph over here we will read out that so inconsistencies in research design and lack of longitudinal uh, empirical evidence refutes the claim of existence of window of opportunity as defined in the ltid model okay as ltid model has defined in their particular uh, diagram that stamina should be done at this particular stage itself so inconsistency and lack of evidence has uh, clear, cleared that out maybe uh, ypd model what ypd model suggests that specific endurance will be built by participating in organized matches or competitions and potentially within a technical session of that given sport so that the i am not saying over here it should not be mis uh, the misconception should not be there or misunderstanding should not be there that endurance training should not be done at all by any kind of sport but what i am trying to say uh, a certain level of endurance will be built by playing organized matches in your training program or competitions 
and with that technical skill sessions as well so maybe a footballers are having their own technical session maybe one is to one two is to two they're having two versus two play t- training session in that as saju sir in his uh, lecture mentioned that there is vo2 max improvement through dry training as well right so small sided games can also have a, a improvement in aerobic performance so that is how you uh, they can improve it uh, this paragraph i would particularly like to read is because that is what happens at uh, a school or uh, uh, at a center where kids are there and physical education teachers are teaching the kids uh, so what they do is within the education sector cardiovascular endurance is inadvertently the most commonly developed fitness component okay it is a most fitness like whenever we go to some kind of uh, pe class we will see kids running here like they will if the coach has not given anything will the coach will say okay go do run 10 15 rounds why it is easy coach aaya bata diya okay 5 10 15 rounds kar lo but and one of the major reason is as asking a child to perform some form of sub maximal locomotion so sub maximal loco- locomotion is just jogging or running at a slow pace would appear safer to teachers than asking them to participate in some sort of form of resistance training okay so there is a fear factor with the coaches who are dealing with kids that if we give some kind of push ups we give them some kind of lunges or something like that some kind of uh, body weight exercises as well they feel that they might hamper or they might injure that kid okay so that, that fear factor should not be there if they are properly educated that, that they can definitely incorporate all these fitness components in a proper way this is specially the case with uh, within the primary school setting in united kingdom where not even in united kingdom this is happening so imagine where not it is recognized that teachers are inappropriately prepared through their teachers training to teach physical education and that statutory requirements for physical education is routinely not achieved so maybe the basic reason because the uh, teachers who are engaged in teaching youth train their uh, kids are not uh, aware about all these uh, fitness component about all these models so as uh, as we know if we are knowing it today it is our duty to create as much as awareness as possible in our society so that we have more uh, talent right from the grassroots level and when they reach uh, a good center they they can enhance their performance much more that is all about the fitness components i covered the nine fitness components okay a uh, few more slides uh, just why we need to individualize uh, uh, the training program uh, is there are th- two three points one of the point is sexual differences coaches should be aware that right now even girls are particip- starting to participate in uh, youth training so the, it, there should be awareness in the, the, the there should be knowledge of that particular physiological differences that will be there in males and females okay so si- similar rate uh, so a uh, pre puberty uh, before the onset of uh, puberty uh, the, there is similar la- rate of improvements in fitness components okay so there is no need so research has suggest uh, there is no need actually to have a different training program for a boy and or a female okay so you can have them to you can have a group of mixed males and fe- uh, females and they can do that same training workout Uh, research as i have said earlier research has suggested that adaptive response is most sensitive d- during pre pubertal years uh, and uh, co- coaches should be also aware that uh, few fitness components will differ in males and females okay so after the puberty at the onset of adolescent sport spurt there is clear difference between fitness components where men make greater improvements that is due to the more androgen concentration basically uh, uh, maybe exercise physiologist can give us more in depth uh, information in that uh, greater improvements with exception of flexibility so uh, this is a, a thing which i have always used to uh, question about uh, that that uh, athlete is so flexible why am i am not able to reach that range of motion or why is that that so basically why females are more flexible is estrogen levels are higher in women and this produces water retention and a higher percentage of adipose tissue and lower muscle mass making women anatomically more adept 
at executing a wider range of joint movement so from this we can see that there are physiological changes and anatomical changes that happen okay so we have to keep in mind always uh, while looking at a particular kid why he is doing he is performing like that and why he is not able to achieve some kind of uh, performance female athletes particularly will go spe sex specific physiological processes that may affect performance all of which has been associated with increased re risk of non contact acl injury so we all know that due to the increased q angle uh, there will be uh, the the landing technique basically majorly the landing technique is quadricep dominant okay so it is quad dominant when they uh, pre puberty so they try to put more pressure on the quads and that is why uh, the, we have to teach them the basics again we have to teach them how to land we have to teach them how to recruit the muscles uh, while they are doing a particular exercises okay so ypd model suggests that plyometrics core strengthening strength training and balance and perturbation training should be implemented within training of female athletes and should be continued till adulthood okay even after after adulthood okay so basically plyometrics core strengthening and strength training and this balance training should be incorporated in their training program then coming to the next point early versus late maturing kids uh, uh, coaches should uh, know that there are kids who will mature earlier and few will have a late maturing so we don't want to uh, judge them on their performance at the level of 14 15 16 few kids might excel once they have reached 18 years of age maybe okay so uh, always uh, keep in mind that uh, so if uh, this uh, chart of peak height velocity can help you to understand at what uh, age he is at what age he is going to reach his peak height velocity whether he has matured or not what are the biological changes happening okay all that stuff initial training status uh, which i mentioned earlier is a training age can be defi defined as the number of years an athlete has been participating in formalized training okay so basically uh, whenever you are starting any sort of training program with any athlete or any individual initial training status should be known uh, if the athlete is well trained if he has a good training status in resistance training maybe 2 3 years of formal resistance training good technical competency i i can see that he is able to perform all the lifts properly so i can uh, i can you know progress him little more faster than a uh, than a individual who has zero training age or less training age so uh, that's it from me uh, thank you guys for patiently listening to me and i tried my best and let's have some discussions thank you sitesh thank you sitesh for your wonderful session uh great knowledge and uh, the floor is open for the question whoever has a question please raise your hand uh is is ashok sir there today gymnastics sir ashok sir i can see him but Doctor, are you there? Hello, Dr. Ah, David. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll Dr. David sir will come to you once. I just wanted to have a chat with Ashok sir because uh, sadly uh, I have I didn't get the chance to attend uh, the previous lecture of anthropometry. And I listened hmm. to it on YouTube uh, and where you asked the question of. Uh, whether uh, late maturing or early maturing is better for uh, gymnastics so i tried my best to find out the best research uh, paper for it and there is a good research paper done by sarita uh, i can forward you later on in that in that particularly they have seen they have studied right from 1960 to 2010 or 15 they have done the study and they have seen all the li gymnasts are late maturing okay sir so th th that is going to help okay. them uh, in gymnastic and uh, the body composition of their uh, of the gymnasts was obviously they had low fat percentage around somewhere around 14.5 something and uh, the somatotype for these gymnasts was ectomesomorph okay so 
they were uh, slightly on the muscle side and a uh, little bit on the like ectomesome also slim and thin uh, less less weight uh, compared to the chronological age uh, relative to the other people and they they were light in weight they were short in height and another uh, important uh, factor was when talent identification was done for these gymnasts uh, they saw that a common uh, point was there that the the width of their shoulder was uh, wider than the width of their hip when the okay. uh, when they did that study so all these points uh, i think i can ha- i have helped you or maybe answered a few of the doubts which you had and if you want i can definitely share that paper with you and you can have a look at it yes. please thank you uh, one more thing i have to tell you uh, in this uh, personality traits uh, our uh, gymnastic uh, personality trait is called as a homomorph it is neither okay. is act, uh, acto meso or uh, so on uh, they are called as a homomorph because they have okay. got a longer neck wider shoulders and right. narrow hips and uh, so is shorter the torso so it is right, a sir. separate uh, personality trait so it is called right, a homomorph uh, personality trait so right, this right. is the uh, thank you very much for your clarification thank you yeah no worries sir thank you thank you thank you for help, t- giving this input as well yes sir david sir yes please david sir sir you are on mute david sir please sir, good, uh, sir yeah good afternoon am i audible yes sir you are Uh, yes, sir, sir. It, is an, uh, it is an excellent wonderful class i have attended so many classes even ltad somebody has taken even for our examination last time they conducted it was a very excellent class you, you have done a lot of homework and it, you have a wide knowledge and uh, it was an excellent presentation i am really appreciate uh, uh, from my side uh, I, uh, i am a volleyball coach you may be knowing that mm, i also have gone through many literature and i did my doctorate uh, in muscular power Uh, yes, as sir. you said strength is a very 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 important aspect and very controversial th- things are there uh, with many many may not agree and all these things are there and as uh, you know i also when i regarding volleyball when i suggested for some of the people uh, uh, because some of the countries they are following 3 to 5 years uh, they put them in swimming i speak about volleyball uh, because some of the countries they follow Three to five years, they put them in swimming. Five to eight years, they put them in gymnastics. Eight to ten years, they put them in athletics. Ten to twelve years, twelve uh, years, the children choice, and about twelve years, uh, they come to coach, which I also uh, appreciate because uh, many they have spoken about the LTAD development only. You, you first time I am listening from you the YPD model. This YT, YPD model is excellent for volleyball. i also uh, appreciate and uh, it's a good uh, point which you have given me ypd uh, model is excellent for you because my point is also like that same only because after 12 years their children when they come to uh, the concerned coaches their coaches will go for the functional training and then follow up, uh, for, they will go for specialization training very systematically as yes, uh, uh, when the coach is not having a proper plan and very systematic scientific approach is very difficult to um, manage and bring the children to the elite perform for your kind information uh, i have challenge with my own sister son and he has played world railways and he got the bronze medal i challenged him for i, I told him to give four to five years of time when he come to after passing 11th standard he came to me i, I gave him i told him please give me four to five years time i as a challenge i made him a world railways uh, david, david stick on with david yeah, kindly this, this, yeah yeah hello right. david I, i come to your point sir i come to the point the yeah, kindly TV. stick on with the topic here. yeah Don't, yeah yeah, yeah. Don't why pd model is best why pd model is best because one thing which i am uh, just uh, um, uh, not uh, i think you left uh, that coordination is missing uh, the coordination is the base for the learning the any fundamental skills that okay. word otherwise everything is fine everything is excellent it's a very uh, wonderful session which i am listening from this uh, thank, thank you sir thank you for dr saju for making this uh, wonderful class thank you sir uh, thank you david sir i tried my best and yeah i might have missed out on many things not only one thing uh, this uh, each uh, concept right from it, not about you training about adulthood everything it took a sport science section and coaching is a vast topic and that is why i think these lectures are happening so everyone can put their inputs in and we can know small small things about from each and everyone's practical experience and 
that is how for personally me and that is how i am going to develop myself with help of you guys uh yes, david uh, dr david uh, yeah, for your know, information huh? uh see uh, our uh, speaker today uh, shetej boite is actually a national level sprinter and uh, he has created national record also so uh, one other thing is that okay uh, when he asked me about um, you know presentation uh, he said i am an uh, i told him okay you go ahead with this topic and this is actually quite nice so uh, though it i mean it's actually it's a big area to cover but what he has done is that beautifully he has uh, made it into a uh, nutshell and explained it in such a way that everyone can really grasp it uh, and uh, yeah i thank you uh, sir Shri he has for... covered all the sports and games sir he has covered all the sports and games in very excellent presentation yeah. sir yeah because he's working in jeeviraj and you know, not see that group age group uh, training for him actually actually, actually i beneficial. was actually actually i was little jealous why he should be in our ncu it went wrong <laughs> yeah i too wanted him actually but then uh, the thing is that okay uh, because he's a lead and uh, lead gets better opportunities and better salary you know so i thought okay let me not if i bring him over bangalore then okay his salary is cut off so i didn't want sir, that he, to happen sir, for him sir no. many thing whatever he said is exactly many thing very very correct sir yeah so he is an you. experienced uh, athlete that's why yeah, yeah. and and we need such people in the uh, sir i am really telling from my inner heart him. sir i am yeah. telling telling from my inner heart very excellent thank you yeah all right okay sorry kavita continue okay. yeah shall jewel. we take next question chitish yeah, yeah, jewel, jewel sir jewel jewel sir hi sir it was a can you nice... yes 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 audible yes okay okay yes, yes. it was a nice session and i would like to know that in canadian long term athletic development uh, they said after the peak height velocity you should wait one year for boys and uh, girls it can start suddenly the strength training and uh, can you put some input on this uh, no actually uh, that uh, if i i can share the ppt again to you uh, actually the athletic canada model is different okay athletic canada model i have shown in the first slide itself okay that was just the base the strength training which can start after uh, puberty maybe after 12 to 18 months have been suggested by bailey and hamilton okay so why they suggested that was because due to the high level of androgen concentration or hormonal changes which will happen in the uh, kid after puberty so that is why they with relation to that concept they suggested it like that but what i feel uh, in this whole presentation the take away point is that uh, ypd model should be followed okay because ypd model has given us all the fitness components and on the basis of the maturational level so if uh, if i hope i'm uh, i have cleared the question like there is there is, there is nothing like you cannot for you can do strength training after sub uh, 12 years of age or 13 years of age you can start strength training before six, uh, like 8 9 years of age as well at the eight, age of 8 9 the only difference is that when you are doing strength training pre puberty before the adolescent spurt whatever physiological changes are going to happen or whatever the adaptations are going to take place are going to take place only on the basis of neural pathways so there will be increased in motor recruitment there will be increase in synchronization of those recruitment they, there will be increase in the firing rates of that motor, uh, motor neuron so that will be the major adaptation uh, which will happen but with males and females after puberty the differences will be uh, 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 dif- the the physiological changes will be different due to the amount of hormonal uh, concentration is different in males and females that's why i hope sir i am able to clear your doubt yeah and uh, one more thing i would like to ask you said about the research in the peak height velocity for uh, men and uh, boys and girls is it from the common people or in the athletic people uh the research i didn't uh, i didn't get the proper research reference for the uh, peak height velocity which was done for indian population like for indian kids it was not for athletes or something like that it was in general in general uh, 
what at what age or what level the kids at, attain peak height velocity so i i had read that it was somewhere around 11.9 and 12.9 if some some anthropometrist can sh share some thoughts on this like at what age indian population or indian kids are reaching their peak height velocity at average age maybe they can share it anyone any any anthropometrist over here dr atony ma'am are you there Yes, actually, if you go for the average age for females, it will be like eleven to thirteen years, and then for males, it will be thirteen to fifteen years. Why we are given an average of that age is actually because like it will vary from one individual to the other. Since no two individual, uh, for no two individual, the ad onset of the adolescence growth spurt is the same. Okay, it will differ from one individual to the other. That's what I mean to say. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but there is no Anthony such study. Uh, Anthony, ma'am, there is no such study study done on the Indian population. Is there any study done on that? It because Indian population is very diverse. If you go by actually the northeastern population, they mature early also. And uh, okay. if I say specifically because I've done on. At least in the uh, from the south zone, so mostly they mature late, actually. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I hope Jewel sir, uh, Anthony, madam has uh, cleared the doubts you had. Uh, yes, Jewel sir. Jewel yeah, sir. Yes. yes, yes. You know, I you you said one more point. I like uh, after the peak height velocity. Okay, you should start the hyper muscle hypertrophy training now. Yeah, that YPD suggests that uh, after peak height velocity, after 12 to 18 months, okay, after attaining peak height velocity. So, if for example you are attaining peak height velocity, that kid is attaining it at 12 years of age. So, peak weight velocity is uh, is started maybe after 12 months or so. So, at peak weight velocity, the androgen concentration is much more higher. Uh, if I am not wrong, if I am wrong, exercise physiologist physiologist should please clear this doubt. uh the about the uh, hormonal concentration but that is the reason why pd suggests that uh, it should be uh, hypertrophy training should be done at that time okay can i add into this yes ma'am sure sure okay Please. so when we look at the peak height velocity okay so at an average it will last for 2 to 3 years 2 to 3 years in an individual when the onset take place so it's better that you monitor the athlete okay so again right after the peak height velocity there will be a gap of like around 3 to 6 months especially in males actually after which the peak weight velocity will take place for females it, there will be a gap of like 3 months if or peak peak weight if, velocity yeah so okay. it will vary from males and female only right after the peak height velocity which will last for 2 to 3 years again will vary from individual to individual right so right. after after the peak height velocity after a gap of like 3 to 6 months the peak weight velocity onset will start off for males and for in females it will be like at least 3 months after a gap of 3 months okay 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 yeah jewel sir uh, i hope uh, yeah, yeah, you are cleared everything so i i think uh, you know it, it's your opinion or uh, when you are working under this uh, uh, kid so did you find that muscle hypertrophy on them or not i just wanted to know after the peak height velocity uh, right now unfortunately due to covid we have not got chance to train with kids so uh, there is no that you know study which i have done but uh, definitely sir uh, whenever i incorporate this training programs with the kids i am dealing with uh, i will definitely uh, let you know what the changes are happening okay thank you it was a nice yeah. session thank you thank you sir. thank you sir uh, can we move on to next question yeah yeah uh, sir sir has raised hand kurian sir kurian sir sir, sir. yeah okay good evening good evening sir good evening. just not for a name sake wonderful class it was really a good class thank you i appreciate you normally after all lectures they we say it's a wonderful lecture but this is one of this was one of the good lecture i appreciate i join my hand with mr david and this is the field 
that is sports training is the field where all the coaches are under confusion right from the uh, from the beginning of their career till the retirement coaches are under trial and error method method like that so when they are at the anger and in the beginning it is really tough to handle the athletes and different qualities at different ages how to distribute in percentage and all and uh, we were, I, i was really worried about so an expert a few experts in this topic that is sports training i used to tell mr mani i used to tell with my colleagues after retirement of mr manilal who will uh, give such an authenticated uh, lectures on this topic and uh, i could hear uh, one mr bhochai also so i'm very happy today we want uh, our scientists uh, uh, who are uh, very good in uh, giving lectures on the sports training topic because our and coach see in india itself you can see in high schools see we run sports hostel we have uh, different states have got sports hostels uh, so i will be sai has got ncoe this and that and everything uh, we have we are been seeing all these things uh, since many years but what we could see is when they are in the sports hostels at the young ages uh, till high school or till puc the children who are good toppers in the national are nowhere in the all india intervarsity and when the upper age groups right, right, so right. this may be like uh, you know a doctor becomes very famous after killing many do- many patients maybe uh, that may be one of the reason coaches in the trial and error method uh, they will be putting this and uh, they will uh, sometimes accidents will take place injuries will take place performance will come down and they will not get sleep and then they will go for a new method like that finding 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 new methods after that after not less than 10 years of coaching experience only they will come to little confusion and still there also there are many okay anyhow it is a good thing so if you have some answer for that uh, our uh, sports hostel children they prefer because Uh, i am uh, i'm happy that uh, from dr saju i heard that uh, you are a national medalist do you have any coaching background uh, mr yeah sir uh, so basically uh, uh, from a financial aspect it was really difficult for me since the beginning so i started my coaching when i was 17 18 years of age so at that time uh, ba- my basic coaching started with very small kids in a company called clinetics okay so right from that time i have been dealing with kids from 2 to 3 years of age to you know 7 8 till 14 15 years of age then after that i got a chance to uh, work with kolkata night riders as well for a few months and then i was working with another company called uh, fitpage and then now i i am here and this is i think why sir i basically why i wanted to come in sai as a coach was to change this uh, thing which is happening with uh, youth athletes so uh, i even i agree with you sir that there are so many talented athletes out there who drop out when they reach to a university level there are so many injuries that happen even before their career starts they are dropping out from their sport so that is what uh, yeah, i hope he here for uh, the coaches there are pressure from different side see yes. at young age they will be uh, included in the nco or anything within one or two years our people will start to um uh, take exactly. them out telling that the, uh, this performance has not come this quality has not come so for one or the other reason we don't have the patience to wait for uh, four to five years also right so and coaches are uh, is also answerable and uh, such things sir, are but maybe uh, so but maybe in this this so maybe in this the, the, the thing which you said just now that the coaches have pressure of uh, giving results in as fast as possible but uh, with scientific uh, uh, support like an snc if you have a good portfolio of that athlete that yes if he is not performing in this first two years i can assure you that in coming 4 5 years he is definitely going to do good and we can show that to the organization and maybe we can help that athlete to stay with us more longer so many times uh, organization will not be having uh, that much patience also because they directly ask for the performance okay anyhow 
it's a good lecture i want to just encourage you to go ahead with your subject so that you will be a asset for our indian sports good luck thank you yeah uh, for tomorrow we have a panel discussion on injuries okay so it's only on ankle injury foot injury uh, ankle and foot so if you have any question there will be a panel and from the beginning itself there's no presentation as such from beginning itself we can start asking the questions and uh, yeah, from your sports mechanics how to prevent injuries what kind of rehab is to be done and how you need to protect your foot or ankle and so on so all those kind of questions can be entertained uh, there will be four people in the panel and uh, yeah, i hope uh, we bring it bring out a new dimensions in uh, a kind of uh, enriching the knowledge so hope all of you can participate in that yeah uh, sorry to intervene uh, yeah kavita continue uh i think so this ashok sir has raised hand ashok sir yes. kindly unmute yourself and ask you kshetra ji bolte ji bahut badhiya bolte hai ab one one thing i want to ask uh, in gymnastics in modern scenario the almost the all conditioning component is same the skills of uh, which men are performing the same women are performing on the floor exercise and table vault so uh, in the conditioning part the quality motor qualities are the same uh, they have to train uh, as good as um, uh, women are trained as good as a men so uh, why, why there is a differentiation of training in a uh, conditioning part men and women okay so if i'm not wrong like your question is basically why there is different in part of men women in gymnastics right sir yes sir uh, yeah uh, if uh, if there is any snc out here who is exposed more to gymnastics uh, i would like them to come forward and put some inputs in here because uh, frankly speaking sir uh, i have i have read a research on gymnastics but i have never been exposed to uh, uh, i have never been exposed to uh, training with a gymnast uh, for a longer time so maybe right now i might not be able to give answer like a correct answer i don't want to give any kind of answer just to uh, say something over here so maybe with some research uh, with some uh, some reading i will like to come back to you and clear that doubt okay, okay sir okay thank you no okay no okay. yeah, thank sir. you thank you very much yeah. welcome sir anyone else anyone anybody has questions please raise your hand jewel do you have question again your hand is raised again okay uh, no it has removed i am okay, uh, it's already 4:15 okay yes, let's wind, yes. wind up wind then up. yeah okay 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 uh, like thank before, yeah before before ending i would just like to thank everyone again for being here thank you saju sir for supporting us giving us the confidence kavita ma'am thank you for being the host for today and if uh, if any anything i can help with uh, to any coaches to anyone please feel free to connect to me and i would do my best to support you guys and let's let's try to bring indian sports again on top level we want some more gold medals in olympics yes sure thank you again from my side for everybody for joining us in this uh, lecture series i i hope you all uh, understood today's lecture and thank you sir jesus for giving us giving me also an opportunity to thank uh, thank all i hope to see you in the next session sir jesus sir shall we end yeah thank you okay thank you sir bye bye bye, bye. take care guys everyone